high school band, but like most high what school bands. What was that bands, band called? Cool? Oh, it was uh, it was called Incision. Right. And uh, the was band. That a bad name. It it was um, I come up with the band name uh, because, and this is going into my childhood. If you really want <laughs> that, um, I, I was born with um, a defect on my head, and um, nobody could explain um, how I got it. Uh, it. It also explains why my I was a bit sheltered because I was I was bullied a lot when I was uh, growing up. Um, I don't know if your camera can see this, but uh, you see, there's a scar there. Okay. I can edit this then. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that like a scar there? Yeah. And uh, you see, there's a shiny bit there. Yeah. Well, my head was like that, and it was just all bald. Huh? And uh, because it was, uh, oh, do you still want more shots? No, no, no. That's, that's, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so I was. I, I went into uh, my first school um, with um, a bald patch. That's like. Um, it's like sending Forrest Gump um, to a really cool college or somewhere. You just know he's going to have um, problems there. You know, trying to explain who he is and stuff and why and stuff. You know, he's different. And I was the different kid. Um, I never actually wanted to be a different kid. You know, I never wanted to stick out. I, I get asked these days, yeah, you know, your problem, Nick. You know, you say, you're me, 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 and you, you want to stand out and stuff, and your attention, this. Yeah, that was the last thing I ever wanted when I was um, um, five, five years old, six, seven, up until uh, 13, which um, something happened at 13, uh, which resulted in me one day creating a band called Week 13. Uh -huh. uh, I had 13 years of feeling weak because I, um, I was bullied every every week there was um, a different story and I'd you know, either run home from school uh, I wouldn't tell my parents everything yeah I love my parents um, I think I didn't tell them enough about what was happening uh, during my school days and um, I wish I had have been a bit more open with them but I think it's very hard for kids to, to tell Adults sometimes, um, you know, what's really bothering them. Uh, I don't. I didn't want to upset them. It sounds weird, but when you're a kid, you still have feelings and you care about other people. I didn't really want to upset them, or I didn't want them to worry. But I was 13. Uh, it's not like a only 13 years, yeah, but yeah, it's not a case of uh, that's just some number to make myself look cool. It was it was the age where um, I had an operation on my head. And uh, what they did is they, um, they, this operation was offered to me when I was eight years old. And they said, uh, you're too young to operate on um, to remove the bowl patch. Uh, you've got to wait another five years. Well, when you're eight years old, five years sounds like, that's like my life again. <laughs> you, you're joking, I, I've got to wait another five years. How am I, I, I can't even go to school next week. Yeah, how are you, am I going to do five years? I'm not going to live. Yeah. And, and to say I was, um, back then, I never had a word for it, but I suppose that the term would be depressed. I was a very depressed child, um, because every, I, I never looked forward to going to school, but I enjoyed the education. And I have, still to this day, um, some friends from school, and they're still my friends now, and I owe them my life. Uh, because they helped me um, stay here on Earth. Uh, I, I could have. Um, there's, there's, there's something I'm not very proud of. Uh, I think when you get, when you're um, under a lot of stress from like bullying and peer pressure and things like that, yeah. See, a lot of this came out of my music, and has done and will will do always uh, because it's part of your life and my artwork, which is why I was drawing skulls everywhere probably. <laughs> Some psych psychologist is out there going, ah, it all makes sense now, you're, you're a nutter. Um, but when I, when I was 13, I had this operation, and um, it was, um, it was a, I, I wish I could thank the surgeon 
that did this to me because it, it kind of um, changed my life. Um, and what happened was, is they there's the bowl patch and they made an incision in the centre. That's why I called yeah. it an incision. And then what happened is um, I, I was. I believe I was made unconscious of this. Some of the details I, I can't even remember because it was so long ago now. I mean, we're talking over you know 20 years. So for me, it's like a long time ago uh, to remember. And I, I've never really talked to many people about this, but I thought might as well as you're here. Um, and what they did is they um, they 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 kind of they got like a little ball uh, and they, they laced the skin around the ball, twisted the ball. So all my skin stretched like that, and when they stitched me up, I had, I had metal staples. I, I think um, I think it was something like about I, I, I'm I'm just well, I say I'm guessing. I, I'll tell you why I kind of know ish how, how much there was. But there was something like probably fifty metal staples, and probably about as many stitches in my head. Probably more stitches, and uh, I couldn't blink. Um, so oh, my my, um, my skin was like this. Now I was in the hospital for all this, and there was a, there was a kid next to me, and uh, I didn't realise I I'd been sat next to this kid for over a week or so. Because um, the thing is, when your when your uh, skin stretched, my, my eyes couldn't shut. You, your eyes need oxygen uh, or something like that. There's some technical thing I can't remember all the details exactly, but um, so I, I would pass out with my eyes open. So I must have been this really scary teenager sat in a, in a hospital with his eyes open like this and people were probably talking to me and like, I'm just not, not there. You know? And uh, what was very confusing for me was my, um, my memories. Because um, imagine this is how, uh, I, I, this was like real time to me. Uh, I was on drugs as well um, and all this other stuff. And what happened was, is they, um, they, my, my memory was like one moment I'd see my family around, around the bed talking to me, right? So this is the first minute. The second minute, it's dark, right? Continuous. And the next minute there's a nurse there, and I go, hello, where's my mum and dad? And she'll say, oh, they were here yesterday. And then she disappears, and then it's, it's midnight. That was a continuous memory for me. It was like about, two days of it was like you sped it up and although I didn't see things sped up it was just it was very very um, traumatic because I was confused like what's going on one a minute ago my mum and dad were here and you said they were here yesterday and that was because they visited yesterday and it was the next day and that, that was just a continuous memory now I don't know what you call that other than weird but um, I had all this and, um, and I, I think I was in a, a hospital for about a month maybe I know I was off school uh, back then, and um, it get, it, it, when I came out of that, it was like Pinocchio. Um, everyone went, suddenly I, I came back to school and I was a, I was a normal boy, and um, everyone wanted to get to know me, and they wanted to know who I was because they had thirteen years of chasing me, fighting me, bullying me. I mean. Suddenly, I didn't like this. I thought, I haven't changed. You have. Or you have. But I had some very good friends that loved me for who I am. Uh, there's a, a chap called Daniel Young. He was my first best friend, and he still is a big part of my life today. And uh, we, we did a film together recently as well, so I tried to get him into films, try to get him into acting and stuff. Uh, but, um, he he was um, he, he didn't change. He just saw me as Nick. Yeah, but everybody else saw me as uh, you're, you're now a human, yeah, and uh, that was harder to um, that was harder than being bullied because I spent all that time um, being bullied, being afraid of who I was and you know and how I looked and stuff. And my bullshit detector wasn't working anymore. My, my fear detector was going, do, 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 alert, 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 people are talking to you. I had no social skills. I didn't know what to say to girls. I didn't know what to say to boys. Over the few friends I had, which were girls and boys and that, which, which um, they treated me 
uh, the way you should treat people, you know, that look a little bit different. And I, I wasn't like elephant man. I, I wasn't. Like, Ooh, yeah. yeah. It, it's just a case of um, I had a defect, and because of that, I was ridiculed for it. Um, could turn around and say, "Did this make you a better person?" Uh, I, I think it just it didn't turn me into an evil kind of person. I think it, it just kind of it, it just knocked me for six. Because I lost a large part of my childhood, you know, where the, the parts where you, you, you go out cycling, move. I, I can't ride the bike. Yeah, where would I go? That that was a thing. <laughs> where would you ride the bike to? Everybody hates you. Right. Okay. Uh, I can't even drive a car now. I think I, I prefer buses and trains because it's kind of independent. You can just get on a train, go somewhere, and you can get off, and you can just leave it. Yeah, you know that train will come back. Yeah. So um, me getting into music uh, was a great way of. Um, expressing myself and uh, art obviously was always something which is still today throughout my life and I, I write um, columns now and um, I've, al I've always uh, been to putting my feelings into my music. Now bear in mind I've become Pinocchio and my, my, my musician story is different to everybody else's. Everyone's got their own story. Some people uh, started playing guitar at the age of four yeah, I, I learned how to play chess at the age of four, uh, which I, I still today find that quite weird, but when I talked to my mum, apparently I, I beat her at five, and she's a very good chess player, and I don't know how the, how I did that. There's a chess yeah. club in Worcester with musicians, isn't it? I, I wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> it's very mathematical, yeah. and I think a game of chess, it's, yeah, I, I, um, I see a game of chess as, as a great way of learning life. Because everything's like chess. I think if you plan moves ahead, that's one of the things you've got to do. I'm not the best chess player, but I think you you have to plan ahead and you have to plan strategies. And, and um, I, I find if you if you're working like four moves ahead, like for, say for now if I'm, I'm releasing a song, I'm thinking of the songs three or four music videos down the line. I'm thinking of the music video I'm going to create, which hasn't even been recorded yet. I'm thinking of what I'm going to do with that because I've already thought about all the other stuff. I've done that. I did that ages ago. And when I'm making my music, a lot of it is stuff I've already written. I, I might go into a studio and record something. It's like, that's brand new. But it was written possibly um, 10 years beforehand, five years beforehand, sometimes two weeks. Yeah, sometimes you get those moments. Um, I, I started working in rehearsal um, rooms and uh, venues. I learned a lot about musicians and uh, I learned a lot about myself. I realised I wasn't on my own. I wasn't as different as I. Because when I start, or, or I start promoting um, bands, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about that and um, how I got into that. Because I really don't see myself as a promoter. Yeah, a lot of people see me as a promoter. I, I just wanted to help and do things because uh, um, nobody else was doing it. It's as simple as that. But there was no other people doing uh, a lot of promoting at the time uh, in my hometown where I came from. 